اوكي خلنا نشوف lecture 3 it's about project definition and we've okay so this is the first phase and uh, in the first phase لازم نطلع على ال budget ال objective ال scope and level of rigor of analysis اوكي هاي it's to define the first uh, security management process and the leader must be able to plan, track, and ensure the success of the project. And success is achieving customer satisfaction and performing quality technical work and completing the project within budget and time frame. So what is customer satisfaction? And it's... Uh, so who are the customers? We have the primary customer and the secondary customer. So the primary customer is the sponsor. And uh, he is the one who has, who is responsible uh, for choosing if the project is successful or not. He's the signature authority of the project. The secondary customers include the stakeholders in the process. So it could be security team, business unit managers, and compliance officers and legal department, technicians, operators, administrators. So for example, the security team could ensure the risk assessment is pro properly scoped. And uh, the business unit managers could understand the uh, business divisions and accurate identification of security risks they help with this and they also clarify usefulness of the security risk recommendations um, and they have the cost of implementing security risk as recommendations so they they uh, they affect these things and the compliance uh, or legal department uh, it has a legal requirement and the technicians are the people who operate the and maintain the security controls. Quality of work. So what does this mean? It means that uh, in general report quality, we have to submit a, a quality report. So it has to be grammatically correct, visually pleasing, addressing its intended audience, so we have to understand the topic. The quality of technical reports is, has to be technically accurate, detailed, and description approach, and it should be clear and have conclusions. Quality in risk assessment reports, so high risk assessment reports, it has to be clear, accurate, and has relevant evidence has evidence so it should be accurate it should have the recommendations it should have the compliance results now we have to complete within a budget and this is the biggest success factor and it's up to the project leader who chooses this and this applies to both internal and uh, internal security risk assessments and contractual ones. And failure means either to uh, causes cancellation or causes a lack of impact. A delayed project is an indication of a project team's inexperience. So how do we set the budget? So mostly the budget is for the operation, the operational, and the elements affecting the cost of the security risk assessment is the rigor of analysis, it's the organizational size, it's the geographic separation, it's the complexity of controls, and the threat environment. The budget must be assess, uh, uh, implement the, okay. This is how it should be, mostly for the operational, 
and the risk mitigation. So how do we determine the objectives? So the security risk assessment can provide benefits. So it has a risk-based spending and periodic review of security risk system, uh, security risk security systems. And this one we already discussed in lecture one. It is the benefits of the security risk assessment and it's understanding so let's revise that so hi hello slide it's the need for security risk assessment so it provides a periodic review of information security program it uh, provides a review of the organization's current implementation it uh, uh, has several benefits okay and what also, it also provides, uh, promotes risk-based spending. So it also gives, uh, it's a requirement. And other benefits are that it transfers knowledge from security assessment team to organization and it increases communication regarding security among businesses, business units. Um, okay. And increases security awareness within the organization. Uh, and also it results maybe as measure of security posture and compared to previous and future results okay uh, so understanding and documenting the objective of security risk assessment helps to focus the project on meeting its needs of the client and the core aspect of security risk assessment is the analysis of the effectiveness of the existing security controls uh, this is what the organization wants. Now we have to look at the scope and we have to limit the scope. So we have a boundary and the project sponsor and security risk assessment must carefully define the scope. Underscoping can cause a, um, it can be dangerous. So underscoping is dangerous may lead to exposure of the organization's assets. Overscoping is also dangerous because it wastes time and money and could lead to security breaches. So if we have outside the bounds. So what are security controls and assets? The security controls and assets can be administrative, physical, technical, and assets can be uh, tangible or intangible. So the first security uh, control is administrative and it focuses on the policies, procedures, and activities. For example, we have the acceptable use, acceptable use policy. So we have the AUP. So we have AUP. And the emergency response procedure, audit log review. We have the physical sec uh, security controls, which are like access control, fencing, lighting. We have the technical and it's logical protection, for example, routers, firewalls, whatever. And we have tangible assets. Assets can be touchable. For example, we have the hardware. Intangible assets could be the data, customer, employee privacy, reputation, so identifying system boundaries is um, 
may include uh, workstations, servers, so hi kulha physical stuff, cabling, routers, and identifying system boundaries. Uh, we also have logical boundaries. Logical boundaries, we have the firewall, uh, we have the router, so we have the firewall, VPN, okay. And specifying the rigor, rigor of analysis. So احنا خلصنا ال objective, scope, ال assets. And now we have the rigor, level of rigor. خلنا نشوف. So in the first thing we have the budget. And objective and scope and level of rigor. So, um, now we have the rigor. The organization and security risk assessment team must determine the appropriate rigor. The rigor depends on the allocated time frame. So, it depends on the time, it depends on the budget. Another way to determine the rigor is to consider the perceived strength of the existing controls. So it depends on the existing controls, the maturity of the organization's security program. So it depends also on the maturity of the security program. Um, the determination of rigor should instead be based on maturity of security program yani for example if we have a less rigid security risk assessment uh, on a less mature security program it will result in nearly identical security considerations. Okay, let's see the scope as statement. Uh, a proper scope will specify a scope statement. Scope statement. So what's a scope statement? It uh, specifies the budget. It specifies the objective. It specifies the targets and the rigor of the assessments okay so we have budget objectives target and rigor that's four things so this is a sample scope statement we have threats we have assets we have controls All right, so what is a project description? To describe the project, we uh, contract or description. Uh, okay, the project description is in the project contract. All the variables listed above influence each other. You cannot perform a widely scoped and vigorous risk assessment at a low price. The client should determine an appro the appropriate values for these variables, variables. Many clients outsource risk assessment because they lack the expertise. They are unable to decide on these values. The solution is to obtain multiple bids from different companies. So what is a statement of work? So a statement of work is, uh, is a portion of the contract. It's a portion of the contract. It specifies the work to be performed. For example, it describes the service, it describes the scope of the assessment, and it describes the deliverables. We have service description. 
which is the first one and it's uh, defined for example vulnerability scan penetration test compliance audit or security risk assessment so we choose and we the scope of the assessment is the scope of work should clearly state all the administrative physical technical controls included in the assessment so it focuses on the controls Uh, يعني the statement of work contains the scope of the assessment and the statement of work also contains the deliverables scope of assessment service and deliverables so for the deliverables we want to see uh, what's the report we, we want to see calculations we want to see worksheets we want to see interview notes the assessment report should include the methodology used in the security risk assessment, the risk assessment results, and the detailed recommendations for risk mitigation, and the evidence collected during the assessments. So what are the contract types? We have the, we have, I think, two types. We have, okay, these are the terms. We have two types of contracts. We have time and materials contract. In the time and materials contract, the risk belongs to the contracting organization. And the organization and the counter and the contractor agree on the estimated number of hours required. Organization and contractor agree on the estimated number of hours required to complete the risk assessment, it's possible that it may end up requiring more time. Okay. Firm fixed price contract is that the risk belongs to the contractor also. La Hona, so this is the difference. Hona, it, the risk belongs to the, con to the organization and for a firm fixed price, the contractor has the risk. The organization and contractor agree on the project description and the price. It's possible that the assessment takes more effort than expected. The description of the deliverables is very important. What are the contract terms? So we have a so for a firm fixed price contract, it's important to um, it's important to have accurate definitions of the scope and rigor of the assess security risk assessment. The organization may choose the next best alternative if negotiations fail. And the issues to consider is the familiarization, uh, expertise, and regulation experience, and security risk assessment activity expertise, industry expertise, and security risk assessment expertise.